Hello students. So uh, let us uh, begin this uh, video lesson on the chapter uh, on polygons, right? So uh, just a quick note, this is actually on chapter 11 in your textbook, which means it's in the B book, right? So if you want to refer to your textbook as you are revising, uh, you will probably need the B book. I hope you have them with you. But anyway, uh, here we have is your handout. So as usual, the handout begins with enduring understanding and uh, uh, it's and uh, enduring essential questions. I think that's a typo there. But sure, re please read them uh, before we begin. I'm sure you have already done that. Okay, so let's uh, begin. So there's a checklist on uh, some of the skills that you're supposed to pick up from this chapter and the big ideas that are involved, right? So, yep, that's pre-reading. This particular activity, we should do it in class. Uh, so moving on, let's begin with the first lesson. So we would like to just uh, recap uh, a little bit on triangles. Uh, we are familiar with triangles, I'm sure. And a triangle, as you can see, is a three-sided shape. And the edges, right, the corners here where the uh, triangles meet, this point here, this point here, this point here, they're just marked in red. Well, they have a name, right? They are called vertices. The singular is vertex. And at each of the vertex, there's actually an angle that we can actually measure, right? These angles are called the interior angles. Or sometimes we just refer them as angles, right? So this is what we have. So in primary school, okay, you actually learn that the, there are a few ways we can classify triangles, either by length or by angles, right? So when we classify uh, it by length, there are a few things. Can I brighten up? Right. There are a few things to take note. We can, uh, if they have the, all the three lengths are e equal in, 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 in length, we call it an equilateral triangle. If it's two out of the three, they are the same. We call it the isosceles triangle. And if all three lengths are different, they are called scalene triangle. Now, we can also classify them according to their angles. So if the angles inside the triangles are acute, uh, we call it acute angles, right? And if one of it is a 90 degrees, it's a right angle. And if it's more than 90 degrees, it's an obtuse angle. So this uh, information is also in your textbook. So do read it up, right? To figure out more. There's an SLS lesson that you can attempt, so um, you are, I'll point the URL to you separately. So let's uh, get some of the basic ideas, right? So here we go. The largest angle of a triangle, okay, is uh, opposite, right? Is the opposite of the longest side. You can test it out, right? Any triangle that we draw, okay, the angle that's, that's, the angle that's opposite the longest length uh, they they corresponds right and uh, the the other the converse is also, not converse the inverse is also true the smallest angle is also the opposite of the shorter side right so this this is a fact that that is established quite easily uh, regardless of uh, uh, how you draw a triangle this is true right and the sum of the length of any two shorter sides must be greater than the longer side, right? So because if the two sides of the shorter side, okay, um, they, 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 they are definitely longer, right? Because if they are the same length, you won't get a triangle, <laughs> right? So it's quite uh, intuitive here. And of course, uh, we already established the fact in primary school that the sum of the interior triangles, they add up to 180 degrees. We call this the angle sum of triangles, okay? Right, next, okay? Next, we want to talk about the properties uh, involving the interior and exterior triangle. So, we know that uh, for angles that's inside the triangle, these, these triangles here, they are called the interior triangles. And the angles that is outside the triangle here, we call it the exterior triangle. Okay, so take note that the interior triangle uh, angles and the exterior angles, uh, they add up to 180 degrees. They are on the same straight line, right? So some properties uh, we can derive um, with regards to interior and exterior angles is that the sum of the interior angles, they add up to 180 degrees. We already uh, know about that. Uh, but uh, that also brings us to something interesting, right? The exterior angles is actually equal to the sum of the uh, interior opposite angles. This is true, okay? Because what happened if I were to just mark out uh, angle C here, we can see that A plus B plus C is 180. Now, C plus D is also 180. So, A plus B plus C 
is equal to C plus D, which is 180 degrees, right? So what happens is if I remove the C on both sides, then it's quite easy to establish the fact that A plus B is equal to D. Okay? So this is always true. So these are the two properties of a triangle that we have actually figured it out. So with this, uh, we can go on and look at the next uh, example here on how we can use this property. So we have a question here, right? Where we have the lines A, B and C, D, uh, C, D, all right? They cut by transversal X, Y. So the X, Y cuts across them. Uh, M, O, P is a straight line. Okay, we are told that, sure. So uh, O, M is equals to O, N. They are, they are marked out as isosceles. Triangle over there. And there's a 90 degrees for A, M, D and C, N, Y. Okay. Angle OPN is 31 degrees. So that's the information that's given to us. So we are supposed to find angle MON. So MON is over here. This is the angle. Let me mark it out. This is the angle that we are interested in finding. Okay. So there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, first thing we can do is we can establish the fact that uh, MNP is 90 degrees. Right. So angle MNP is 90 degrees. Right. So M. And P is 90 degrees. We can mark it out here. Right? So the reason for this is because of vertically opposite angles. So it's, 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 good, it's good to write out the reasons, okay, or how we actually establish all this fact. Right? So therefore, okay, therefore, M and P is a right angle triangle. Right? Right, so that triangle is right angle, okay. So what we do next? Well, since we establish that as a fact, then we know that angle, let me use a different color here. This angle over here, okay, uh, where we add it to the 90 degrees and the 31 degrees, it should give us 180 degrees. So that is the uh, angle sum of triangle property that we're using. So angle N, M, P, Right, which is marked out in green, okay, is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 31 degrees. And the reason is because of angle sum of triangles. Right, so we work this one out. This is 59 degrees. Okay, now finally, the property uh, of an isosceles triangle, we know that this angle here is the base angle. This angle here is the base angle because of the property of isosceles triangles, they are going to be the same. Therefore, we can actually find our um, solution, angle MON, uh, using that property, right? So since triangle M and O is an isosceles triangle, Angle M O N will be equal to 180 degrees minus 59 degrees twice. Right? And that will result in 62 degrees. Got it? Right? So, um, well, I hope you get this. This is uh, really just understanding. Okay, let us uh, continue with the... Another example. So here we have a triangle ABC inscribed in a circle uh, with the center O, right? So you can see that what it means is that the triangle, the vertices are all on the circle. <clears throat> and we are told some information, right? So uh, this question gave us a little tip. It tells us to let angle CAO be X. So we're going to do that. So uh, to help us to visualize better, then we can start by marking out the angle here and say that this is x, right? This is good. So what happened is they tell us next that if angle B, uh, CBD is twice CAO, so CAO is x, that means CBD, I'm no, sorry, CBO, um, this is going to be 2x, right? So I'm going to mark it out as well. This is going to be 2x, right? Hope you can see that. And the next piece of information is that BAO is one and a half times of CBO. So uh, angle BAO 
is one and a half times, right, of angle CBO, which is 2x. So this is going to be 3 over 2 times 2x, resulting in 3x. So angle um, BAO, BAO is going to be 3x, so based on the information that's given to us. So we have established that, right? So once we have all this information, we can go ahead and try to calculate the angle uh, CAO, which is X, which is what uh, we are trying to find, right? So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so what we need to do here is uh, figure out how all these um, triangles relate to one another. And the fun thing is this, right? Because they are all extended from the center of the circle O to the edge of the circle. Uh, so all the length, O A, O B, and O C, they are actually radius, uh, radii, right? The plural for radius. So they are the same length, which makes all this triangle actually isosceles triangle. And because they are all isosceles triangle, we can establish uh, a lot of this um, information in this manner, right? We can start by saying that angle A C O, right? Angle A C O is going to be equal to X, okay? And the reason is because uh, isosceles triangle, right? Because uh, triangle OAC is isosceles. Okay? Yeah, we just want to make it very clear, right? It's isosceles. Okay? So we can mark it out. This is X. Oops. My Apple Pencil not working very well. Right? So similarly, uh, we also can establish the fact that the angle uh, OCB, right, is going to be equals to 2X. Because this time round, triangle OBC is also isosceles. Right? So this angle over here is going to be 2x. And finally, this angle here is going to be 3x for similar reason. Come on, why is my Apple Pencil not working? Right? So angle OBA is equal to 3x. Again, because triangle OAB is isosceles okay so from this information now we know that uh, we can add them all up okay so um, we have um, x plus x plus 2x plus 2x plus 3x plus 3x this is going to be equal to 180 degrees and the reason angle sum of triangle right that's the reason so we work this one out 12x is equals to 180 degrees so x is going to be 180 divided by 12 that gives us 15 degrees okay therefore angle c a o is equals to 15 degrees there we go okay so i hope you have been successful uh that uh, ends uh, lesson one so assignment one uh, you can try now, uh, about the assignment in this chapter is that all of them come from the review exercise 11, right? So, um, I, I mean, I'm fine if you do assignment 1, assignment 2, and assignment 3 all together as a one package and submit them all to me, to me um, um, together because they're all from the same uh, review exercise, right? So, that ends uh, part 1.